Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Wargroove. I gotta say, I love the main me menu music in this game. I've been uh, listening to it while getting things set up here. This tune is just extremely good. There's a lot of things about this game that are really well done. Alright, so let's try just the simplest puzzle level. I'm curious what these are like. Uh, so, Enmid here. Take Sigrid to victory in a single turn. Greetings. Okay, do we actually know Sigrid's ability? Welcome to puzzle mode. In puzzle mode, you have a single turn to complete the battle. These puzzles will test even the most accomplished of yeah. tacticians. Okay, so we just gotta win turn one? Yeah, just defeat Tenry. Alright, well, the fact that Tenry is all grooved up is irrelevant then. What does my groove do? Drains all health from an enemy unit and adds it to her own health. I assume that you cannot do that to commanders. We don't have the movement anyway. So... Literally the only thing that we can do with this... ...is attack that unit. So we do, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we could get a good horse crit on their hero if I just get rid of that unit. Which I can do with my Vampiric Touch. How about you? Wow. It's fairly intense. Alright, so we get a good crit here. That's a start. Man. Alright, so if we were able to get rid of this archer, then we could get an alchemist crit on Henry from the bottom, and then we can get a crit from the swordsman. Yeah, this will do the job, right? Crit from the swordsman being adjacent to our hero. Then you kill the archer, which opens up an alchemist crit from the trees, and that should do it, right? Interesting. 30 to 45. So there's a chance this won't work, even though this is a functional solution. Like, it could be the case that this doesn't work, and then we do the puzzle mode battle again, and it, and it does. That seems a little... Maybe they should turn off the damage variance for puzzle mode. Okay, well that was easy enough. I mean, it was the tutorial puzzle, so that makes sense. And we get a star for it. So I haven't actually shown you guys what we do with the stars, have I? Like, I saw it, and I think I mentioned it. But uh, in the extras menu... Yeah, we can buy stuff in the gallery with the stars. Uh, this does not cover all... Th there's only 150 stars worth of stuff to buy. And you have to unlock the ability to buy some of it. I assume... Uh, this might show us stuff from, like, the fourth faction, or no, we've seen all four factions. I don't know. This probably, you know, shows stuff that we haven't seen yet. I guess the songs play more arcade runs to unlock this track. Okay, so we don't unlock those with stars. Yeah, I don't know what you do with the rest of the stars. And obviously the codex is filling in as we meet units and, or meet the factions and the different people and stuff. Well, I guess let's, um, let's just step into the next puzzle then. Take Ragna to victory in a single turn. So we know Ragna's uh, Ragna's thing is the shield jump. So they do have a stronghold on this one, but it, based on what we see here, it's hard for me to imagine that killing the stronghold is going to be feasible. How much damage does the shield slam do again? 65% of the damage that she would inflict at full health. So, probably not actually a good thing to do, because we can actually we can just run over and, and do actual melee damage. Although, if I do a shield jump, I could um, put myself in a position where the swordsman would also be able to get a crit. What else would we do? You're not going to be able to crit, you're not going to even be able to reach him. Hmm, this one does seem more difficult. I don't think we have enough sources of damage on their commander actually get a kill here. Well, we couldn't possibly destroy the strongholds, could we? If we shield jump, does it do damage to the building? I'm wondering if maybe that maybe it is in fact possible to destroy the stronghold with shenanigans like that. It, it can't be, right? I guess actually, hold on. The knight... Um, yeah, the knight could crit the stronghold.
So if we use the Spearman to attack the Swordsman, and then we do Ragnar's Shield jump over here, we'll open that spot up, which would allow the Knight to crit the building. Uh, the Archer can't quite get range on the building. Hmm. I'm kind of curious. So if we Shield jump, we can Shield jump here. That hits that Alchemist as well. I'm not certain this is going to work, but I want to try it. Boy, I hope that voice actress didn't, like, hurt her throat very seriously, because it kind of sounds like she might have. So you could come up and attack this guy, but that doesn't really help, because the Spearman can't do anything of value other than that. Yeah, now we have a crit on this building. You can wipe that guy out, which will let the archer get close enough to shoot the building. You don't actually do very much damage to the building, although I guess the archer probably doesn't either, right? Forty-nine to sixty-four is a pretty large damage range here. Now the archer probably would do enough damage, right? Yeah, maybe. Incidentally, the archer is the only other source of damage we can get on this thing. Yeah, so see, like, it, a kill is possible here, but not guaranteed. Yeah, like, that, that could have worked. And now, because it didn't, we no longer have the ability to do 3% more damage, but I could just try it again and do the exact same thing, right? And maybe it would work. There really shouldn't be damage variants in puzzle mode, I feel like. I'm just trying to figure out, like, if there's a better way of doing this. I don't know, I think this is pretty good. I'm trying to figure out if there's a better way to... If there's a better way to open up... If there's a better way to do this such that we can open up another slot adjacent to the building. I have to do this in order to get the... Uh, in order to get the bow through. If there's no way it's not right to throw this down. And if this hit for max damage, it would knock the building down to 10%, which would guarantee the archer kill. Hmm, 18%. You know what? I'm wondering if maybe there isn't actually variance. Because we're, we're seeing the exact same value here that we saw last time. Yeah, maybe the variance is, uh, is uh, fictional in this mode. That would be very strange to still show the, the varied damage amount on the tooltip, but have it not actually work that way. Okay, well, let's let's see if we can divine for ourselves another solution to this. We're very, very close, it feels like. So... I don't know that we're going to be able to kill their commander. I think, I think too many of our units start too far away for that to be the play. Maybe we want to use... It's hard to imagine we don't want to use the knight on the building. The knight does a huge amount of damage to the building. If we did use the knight to just clear a space adjacent to the building for our other units to run into, we could get the alchemist in and do non-lethal damage. Part of the problem here is that um, the archer... If we don't do this thing where I use the alchemist to clear the archer's path, the archer can't contribute at all because I can't even get close enough to shoot that guy. And this feels a little bit bad because of the fact that uh, the Swordsman is left doing nothing. Okay, well this is the only thing the Swordsman can do. Let's try involving the Swordsman directly. This would allow us to attack You're the building with the Spearman, but that means that the, um, the Knight doesn't get to do anything. But if the Knight kills... 
the knight kills you, you know, the alchemist hit the building for 17 to 27. The spearman can hit the building. But then we don't get the knight crit and we don't get the archer shot. And yeah, there, there must not actually be any... Well, I was going to say there must not actually be any variance, but it could just be that the wargroove does static damage. I know this is a little bit of a bummer, but hold on. I want to try this one more time. Yeah, it did leave it at exactly the same value. Okay. So, there probably isn't actually damage variance in puzzle mode, as there obviously should not be. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how we could get a little, any more damage done here. Alright, well, maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm fixating on the wrong thing, then. Maybe, maybe it is possible to deal with the commander? It feels like it wouldn't be, though, with the very small amount of units that we're able to actually bring to bear against her. Because if we use the shield jump anywhere where it's going to actually damage the commander... It doesn't really do that much damage to the commander. We can soften this guy up. But I'm not sure how that helps, <laughs> really. Right, like we could have our uh, we could have our alchemist run forward and just dispatch him, but that doesn't that doesn't really do anything. Uh... Well, you could stand here and crit for 14 to 28. Yeah, that's never gonna get us where we're going. It's definitely about killing the Stronghold. We just have to figure out what the right way to kill the Stronghold is. Part of the problem that I'm having here is that it doesn't seem like the Swordsman or the Spearman... Like, it seems like only one of them can be useful. Which suggests to me that I'm just missing something. Alright, what if... Shield jump has a pretty huge range. There's a lot of different ways we could land this shield jump. If we don't hit that guy, then we can't employ we can't use the archer in the battle at all. Yeah, I just I just don't have a good idea for how to do this one. I'll tell you what, we're not, I'm not going to sit here and bang my head against it on camera. I might come back and think about this, but let's, uh, let's resign out of this puzzle and have a look at one more. And then we'll probably do uh, an actual story level. Get the Cherrystone Villager to safety in the northwest in a single turn. Okay. In a single turn, huh? I wonder if it's if the case here is that the wagon can move fast enough if you just clear the way. That's a lot of travel. I wouldn't think so, but there almost can't be another way to do it, right? So any space off the road is extra movement for the wagon. We have to clear out the units that are on the road. Ooh, we're not actually going to be able to kill this one. Well, we can kill the swordsman very easily in a bunch of different ways. We can kill the archer very easily. The trick is going to be getting rid of this thing. And killing this spearman <laughs> doesn't help. I don't know what I'm thinking here. Yeah, like, you get rid of the swordsman. We load you into the wagon. We can easily clear this archer. You don't quite get the job done by yourself. Sadly, we can't quite kill this thing. No, and this doesn't get us anywhere near where we need to go anyway. Ah, we have to... We have to wargroove the wagon. Right, right, right. His war groove allows units to take an additional turn. I do wish there was a just a restart button on that menu. Okay, so we have to clear the path for the wagon as much as possible, then we have to war groove the wagon. So if I do this... The wagon can make it all the way over to the archer. How much movement do I actually have? 12? 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this is the actual spot where we will stop no matter what. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way... How does this, it only it only allows the units that are directly adjacent to me to gain an extra turn, right? Yeah, adjacent units. Hmm. So Caesar can like go to here. So if we had the alchemist kill this guy from the trees, we had the wagon move to here. Maybe we don't have to kill that guy. Okay, yeah, maybe... Hold on, maybe I screwed up already. Is there a way to kill this guy that doesn't involve using that alchemist? Yes. We can use the dog, which seems to have no other purpose, plus the swordsman. Then this alchemist can get a kill right here, and that opens up a route for the wagon. Hmm, we can actually have the knight run to right there. Well, hold on. We know we're doing this. Go here and wait. We can run up and kill this guy. Oh yeah, this is perfect, right? We run up and kill the knight, and then we inspire, and this gives the knight a crit on the uh, on the war wagon. Or on the trebuchet, which means the wagon does get to use the road the rest of the way. Yep, okay, that one was easier. Those are really cool. How many are there? 25. Well, I mean, we should look at the last one, right? Oh my! Okay, they get uh, they get fairly complex. So we have Sedge, we have to kill Sigrid, or um, Ragna, rather. Yeah, that is more complicated. There's a huge amount of just like visual noise here that's supposed to be distracting. Like, we could potentially get a Spearman crit? If we got the Spearman crit, though, we wouldn't be able to hit Ragna from the bottom anymore, though. Because, like, if we use the dragon to clear this guy out, then we move a spear to here and a spear to there and attack, and that's cool. What does Sedge's thing do again? It's a target for 35%. If the target is killed, the groove is not depleted and the turn does not end. Ah. So you're trying to figure out, like, what is the right Sedge chain to get me through. Yeah, wow. This looks really cool. Okay, obviously we're not going to do this right now. Let's go do a story mission. But this puzzle mode is neat. There's a lot of stuff in this game. I'm souring a little bit on the dialogue. Uh, not the plot so much. I'm fine with the plot. But the, the dialogue and the amount of it is a little is a little much for me. But everything else that's going on here is extremely cool. Alright, so walk past the crate dragon skeleton and discover that Ryota, Ryota is defeated. But here comes Koji. Emmerich steps in to take on the plucky prince. Yeah, sure. Who needs allies? Let's kill them all. So, you're Koji, the Empress's son. Interesting. And I suppose this battle puppet must be Tenko. Yeah! I'm Koji! I mean, yes! I'm Prince Koji, and this is Tenko. That's, yeah, that's what we just said. And we won't let you anywhere near my mom! <laughs> I heard that. Haha, <laughs> valiant and bold, just like your mother. <laughs> but do you possess her skill in battle? Yeah. You'll, you'll just have to fight me to find out. That's a no. He doesn't think so. Your Highness, Prince Koji, you don't have to fight him. I have to defend Heaven Song from people who are not attacking. Interesting. Hmm, how fortuitous. They're huh. still here. What are, Emmerich? These old golems. Your father and I used to train with these when we visited Heaven Song. They're incredibly powerful constructs with a cherry stone at their core. Mm -hmm. Though their magical charge obviously hasn't been maintained. Yes. If I can get close, I can revitalize them and bring them under my control. Okay, yeah, I'm very eager to be able to use the giants. That sounds real cool. 
Well, do we just have a little tiny bit of income right now, huh? Just 200? Well, a couple of early swords to help us capture buildings around here is probably the right move. Yeah, I can't imagine what else we would do. They're starting pretty soft, but they do have three barracks. Well, the giants do seem to be very powerful, and the only way we're able to kill them reliably is by baiting them into incredibly dumb situations, which hopefully I will be able to avoid with my own giants. Hmm. Do I want to... Yeah, you know what, we better. Thinking we can just run along the road, but I guess this is actually just as fast, and also it gets us a building. So he gets to run over to here and grab this next turn. I guess we don't really need to hire another swordsman. But, like, what else would I get? An alchemist is good and broadly useful. Fast, too. Yeah, sure. We're definitely going to need to keep up the captures for the moment. Yeah, their economic advantage is significant. The Giants will help. Pretty torn between... I guess it's better to stand a little bit further up. It probably won't end up mattering. And then, uh, probably I just want to save for a second here. We can pick ourselves up a Harpy. Pretty awkward for them to deal with a harpy, as long as we're a little careful with it. We're not going to be able to get another barracks unless we actually push inside their walls. But I mean, with us having a barracks and a tower, I suppose we'll have lots of ways to use all our money. It is going to be all pretty far away from where we're going, though. Uh, this might actually be a good turn to hire a wagon, now that I think of it. I'll have this guy run over and grab this thing, and I'm going to throw the Alchemist in the wagon, actually. We'll just wagon him forward to grab some other stuff while we go and wake up the Giants. It looks like we just have to go anywhere within this little glowing area to wake them back up. Next turn, we'll buy our flyer. Well, they seem to have predicted my plan. Maybe it's less good to buy the flying unit uh, now. So dogs are not actually good against alchemists, right? And drop him off in the cover. 35 damage against the wagon, 60 damage, but, I mean, we're in cover. We'll get to Counter-Strike pretty hard. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. He, he can always just jump back in the wagon if this turns out to be bad. You know what? We can play around a Ballista. Do I maybe want to pull in, like, a Battle Pup? Just, we need we need more stuff that's kind of good at fighting and also fast moving. Oof. Of course, they hired a knight immediately. Well, I really appreciate that uh, that battle pop going after the wagon it makes my life a lot easier. We can move you to here and just wipe him out. We get counter attacks, but not in a critical way. I will be able to be attacked by the archer. I guess that's a danger. Probably we don't have to go all the way to the flag, because the glowing area is all the way out here. But I also don't want to risk wasting a turn if it turns out that we did have to go all the way to the tile the flag is on. And if we only had to go to here, why wouldn't they put the flag here? Yeah, let's just be on the safe side. Golems are awakening. 
All right, I suspect this is going to uh, turn the tide in the middle here a little bit. And as I remember, uh, the Ballista is not actually very good against them. Just as strong as they ever were. Let's put them to good use. A critical hit when at 40% or below, the only thing they're really vulnerable to is a dragon. And they're actually quite fast. So I do kind of want to just take this guy out. It's just really easy to do right now, and the Alchemist can just fall back for healing. And we could hire a combat unit. Like, I could hire my own Ranger. I actually... We could use a Ranger up here, and we have a wagon to throw them in, so... We want to wait right there, just at, at maximum range so that we have maximum wagon running range. Alright, we got to remember that our war groove has particular synergy with alchemists, so we might want to hire another alchemist or two in the near future. We're starting to get up to having a real amount of money, but this next turn or two is probably going to be pretty rough. As they break like a wave over our formation. Oh, that was a lot of damage. Okay, well, obviously the Alchemist retreats. Yep, the Archer can't even follow this time. How much damage do you do to a giant 25? And you are actually worse. You are actually worse than that. Man, the Ballista's really bad outside of its, ex like, one extremely specialized role. I don't really... oh man. Things are very annoying. We may end up just flying our, uh... Flying our harpy around the side. Load you in here. Unfortunately, the dog needs to be pretty careful until this guy is down. There's a pretty good chance he just runs over here to attack the building, because you know how they love to uncapture buildings when they can. And then I think I'm going to hire another Battle Pup, uh, partially because they're fast and good, and partially because we are going to need additional... Um, we're going to need an additional Battle Pup if we want to get any crits out of our first Battle Pup. And once we get the Alchemist down, they're actually pretty good against all of the stuff that's up here. I guess the, the Knight is something we're going to have to be cautious of as well. Oh, right, the flyer. I th thought I had... Huh. I must have moved one space too far forward. I thought I had moved to a safe, lo a safe location on that. Well, the good news is we get to start crushing them. Uh, all you can do is this, so go and do it. Yep, that's good. Flex, let everybody know you're tough. This is an open-handed wow. slap to the building. It's very disrespectful. Whoa, those things look a bit like Tenko. Uh, I mean, your magic is no match for Heaven Song Engineering. Uh, I mean... They don't have anything over here that's a threat to us at all, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna wade into the battle and we're gonna... We're gonna let them know that we are present. Uh... I guess running down here is very safe. So we get a nice easy shot in here, and then this guy is potentially killable with the Swordsman. Two of the three damage values there are kills. And that keeps the Swordsman alive, which has some obvious value. At, at the very least, as a distraction, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. 
If you run up to here and get a pretty good crit, then I get hit by the Spearman quite hard on my turn. Which I don't love. Okay, we can run forward to here safely. I'm actually going to be remarkably safe from that archer. That's only with all of the units standing as they are, though. If they move either of these guys and then move the archer into one of those positions, they will be able to retaliate against the battle pup. Pretty hard. Like, we lose the battle pup if we do this. That said... Maybe it's worth it, because I think I do want to buy another Harpy this turn. Getting rid of... Or at least getting a significant amount of damage on the only thing that's left that can really be a threat. Seems pretty okay. And then I think we actually do have to be pretty careful with the Alchemist. In particular, I would really hate it if I let myself get hit by that Knight. We could end up here. Like, this should be safe, right? It's outside of the Knight's movement. No, it is not. This should be safe. Forty-five damage, and then, you know, about half of that. I guess it's not so bad if the Ballista shoots the Alchemist. Yeah. Okay. The wagon is definitely moving somewhere. I don't know. Back here, I guess? I could just reinforce it. I don't know that I care enough to do that. So ideally, we would finish this off by just killing their commander. We'll see if they make that feasible. If he's willing to walk forward into the path of the giants, it might be totally doable. Okay, no big surprise there. We knew we were sacrificing the dog by making the move. This guy's made himself extremely killable. Their commander is running like a small child. Probably because of uh, literally being a small child. And all this stuff is fine. They brought themselves a witch. That's annoying. Uh, well, this this guy has very little to do. He may as well go and recapture that. I think I'm willing to sacrifice the other battle pop here. Like. These Battle Pops have done some good work. Only get 67% damage on the Knight. Hmm. Yeah, Knights are tough, man. Well... There's a lot of stuff here that I want to kill. It really sucks that the archer is somehow unable to shoot absolutely everything. Definitely have to be really careful with the harpy now that they have a witch. We have our own alchemist. The Alchemist could reduce this to almost nothing. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about that anymore. Hmm. I think I do just kill this and severely damage that. And then we could use the wagon as a shield to move the archer forward a little bit safely. Yeah, like, if I move the wagon to here, then the archer can move up behind it, and now has range on the next turn to move forward and actually attack. They're not going to be able to kill the wagon fast enough for it to, uh, for it to die this turn. And I feel a little bit like they're losing control. 
Our alchemist is not quite close enough to kill the harpy for attacking the dog. But I mean, the, the dog is dead no matter what, right? They have too many units in the area. There's nothing we can do to stop that. And it completely... Uh, it damaging the archer enough to almost completely take it out is worthwhile. I might just save this turn and get a witch next turn, or... One, two, three, four, five, six hundred. So we could afford to buy something. Battle pop's not great. Honestly, maybe it's just a spear. A spear is pretty good against a lot of the enemy units here, and we already have a wagon. Yeah, and that ensures that we will still have enough money for the witch. See, they bought themselves a trebuchet. That's, uh, aggressive. Full cowardice. Okay. Yep, I, I'm a little surprised at how many of their attacks that Battle Pop consumed. That was actually really nice. Now, with the trebuchet, we do actually have to be careful. Trebuchet is a real danger to our giants. This was very nice of them to do. I'm not sure... Like, is that the right move? Okay, so you probably want to just finish this guy off. You almost certainly just want to recapture this. If we run the alchemist forward and kill this thing, the alchemist is going to pay the price. These guys are just slow enough for that not really to work. I mean, we can drop the Battle Pup pretty easily. They'll roll their trebuchet just barely into range, and then we'll back off. This probably buys us some good time. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the farthest you can move no matter what. I guess if I do this... And I sacrifice the Alchemist to get rid of a unit that we don't really have a lot of good ways to deal with. Then we know that, uh... We should definitely capture that. We know that they'll commit some more units over here to kill it, and then those units will die very easily to the Giant. Very careful about the positioning around this guy. We're definitely going to be reliant on our archer to kill their witch. But I think I can go to here pretty safely. That ballista is going to get to do a very small amount of damage. Nothing we can do about that. And I did some math wrong somewhere. Uh, you know, I lost a, uh, I lost a building, and it put me 26 gold short of buying a witch of my own. Well, at this point, honestly, it might be better to just get another alchemist. We are going to have to deal with that witch, and I'm a little worried that that might evade us otherwise. Boy, they sure do have a lot of money. Just buying, like, a thousand gold worth of units the turn after they purchased the trebuchet. Huh. Interesting that they moved the archer. Because they had an easy crit there. Yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay. You can't hit all that hard. Let's start with that. do have the ability to drop the cherry stone, but we probably just have to... Well, I can drop it in a space adjacent to me, right? What's the area? Is it two spaces out? Three spaces out. Okay. So if I moved to, like, here and dropped it on the mountain, it would make this a three defense spot, which means we can get our crit from down here, which is a little bit safer. It's still within archer crit range, so I guess it doesn't really matter.
We can do a lot of good damage here. It's just not going to be enough is all. Well, I don't know. I guess there's no reason not to load up in the wagon. I just completely clicked the wrong button there. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. You really can't kill... Okay, well, get it down so low that it, <laughs> it now is dealing completely negligible damage. Uh, for some reason, they just gave me a free kill on the trebuchet. That seems like a pretty poor plan to me. They really should have done the thing I said and just moved it just close enough to be able to attack me. I can't really do anything meaningful. Like killing this, uh, killing this ballista at this point really doesn't matter. Cherry stones defend us. If I do this, this gets him low enough that attacking him from the mountain is almost a kill. He'll be too weak to counterattack or do much damage on his own turn. So yeah, we're still gonna lose this uh, this alchemist, but you know what? Maybe not. Actually, if I move the giant to here and crush that guy, the spearman no longer has an attack. This is the only thing that can hit the alchemist, and it's so wounded. I don't think it'll be lethal. No, we just heal him back up. Yeah, okay. A lot of this is going all right then. Do I even want to buy the witch anymore? We have an alchemist. We have a couple of alchemists down here. Wondering if maybe this, since we have 900, maybe this would be a good time to buy our own trebuchet. Which we can load into the wagon next turn. Sorry, no you can't. But it's still very, it's still very powerful. It's pretty fast moving on its own. Okay, I think that's it. Good luck, alchemist. I think between the archer's damage and the um, high defense rating of that tile now, should be okay. Yeah, this is just, like, not a good move at all. This should do the trick. I do love to fight the commander, though. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure we should survive this. Nope. Man. That must have been some pretty high damage variance. Okay, well we have a what I would describe as a compelling amount of control over this situation now. Finally get rid of that ballista. Roll our own trebuchet forward to here. I'm, I'm right in thinking, yes, okay, I cannot load the trebuchet into the wagon. We still could load somebody else into the wagon, though. So we knock you out. We knock you out. Oh man, I did 97% damage. That was almost the minimum possible damage. I'm just gonna stop them from advancing out of this <laughs> this gate here. No more moving forward for you. Okay, well, we have taken control of the backfield. I think it makes more sense to put the archer in the wagon. Oh, I have a spear in the wagon. That's probably part of why I couldn't do things. Get out of there. I have just enough to focus on here that I'm able to lose <laughs> lose track of what I was doing. And you know what? A fast-moving, pretty hard-hitting unit might be exactly what we want in this situation. I could have bought another flyer there. Maybe that would have been better. Flyer does not do as much damage as we can get out of the night most of the time. So. Alright, so we'll probably just uncapture this with this guy and then have one of these units run down and reclaim it. Actually, this guy can run down and uh, and reclaim it for us. But I think we are uh, we are well on our way here. This trebuchet represents a serious existential threat and I don't know that they have the tools necessary to deal with it. Also, each one of these giants is a serious menace to them. And they're not doing a good job of dealing with them either. 
Okay, I could go in there and deal a pretty serious blow to that hero. But... I guess they don't really heal, do they? Hmm, that might actually be a good idea. Alright, what about this? What do we want to do about that? Hmm. I think I'll have... I'm going to have this archer be the one to reclaim this thing. Sorry, I should probably do this... I should probably do this from a tile that doesn't have a defense disadvantage. Although, actually, never mind. Doesn't matter. Nobody can reach. So, 73 to 82%. We have to get pretty lucky here. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, should I just... I should probably just finish knocking it over. Okay, so we got that for next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and... Hmm. Kind of will load the alchemist into the wagon for the sake of movement efficiency, but if the bird comes forward, I'll wish I hadn't. And if we load the swordsman into the wagon, like, what am I actually going to do with it? It's probably better for him to just replenish over here, right? I could just bring my... Yeah, if we, if we bring the alchemist up to here... And then put Emmerich in a position where he can be attacked by the Harpy. And then we can move him out of the way and have the Alchemist run forward and kill the Harpy. There's a pretty good chance that Harpy just uh, sacrifices herself for him. They seem to love to do that. Okay, so there's a chance the Harpy just attacks the Giant instead. I'm trying to figure out whether I think this Spearman is worth my time, or whether we should just uncap this building. I think it's the building. If I'm going to do that, I should probably do it from the high defense space. Okay, so now my swordsman could potentially just fight their swordsman for uh, control of the northern area here. And then maybe we don't need to hire anything at all? Or we could just, you know what, we'll hire another ranger, because uh, one of our rangers is a little bit geographically indisposed at the moment. The wagon back to pick you up. Okay. Alright, let's hope that this harpy falls for the bait, because if it does, we're in really good shape up here. Yes, it totally did. I should never have doubted our bait. Yep, and their, uh, their commander's just going to run and hide. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. Uh, this is a little inconvenient. Now you're just going to have to back up. Not quite lethal, but close enough. This absolutely is lethal. I'm going to move around... I'm going to move to here before attacking, trying to deny the knight the ability to get a critical attack on me. So we can finish uncapping that. I don't think I'm in any danger from moving the trebuchet here, and it's now a serious positional threat. All right, a little bit more income for us. This swordsman is in a significant amount of danger. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to be far enough forward to crit him in any location that he went move to, while simultaneously being unattackable, but he probably will not come over here and attack me. Because it would 
be a pretty bad trade for him. Man, you don't really have a play at all here. Guess I can just wait there, ready to uh, maybe climb over the mountains, if it looks like that's going to be a viable thing to do at all. And you get to just get dropped off directly in the action. We could hire another flyer now, now that it looks like they're going to have a really hard time controlling the skies, but like... As soon as we do this, we have to watch out for that witch from them. Alright, let's see what they got. We're feeling pretty good about our position here. Okay, they bought a flyer and an alchemist. That's not much of a move there. Well... This seems pretty straightforward. Alright, come on, fingers crossed. Let's see that high damage variance. Alright, nice. That was, uh, that was actually pretty lucky. We had to hit pretty high on that. Uh, I don't necessarily want to provide Emmerich to that archer, although if I put Emmerich in a position to get attacked by the archer, we know what will happen. Let's just capture this for now. Alright, so your toast. Six move. Moving through this space is going to cost three frames. So actually, he'll be able to get around to here even if I do use the swordsman to block the space right in front of him. I don't really have a strong play for the Harpy this turn, so let's just finish this guy off. That allows us to roll the trebuchet forward instead of using it to attack. We could totally roll the trebuchet forward into a position where it is potentially in danger from that archer, as long as we have somebody to protect it. That could be the swordsman job. He, he could just jump in front of... Uh, the attack, because like if the archer shoots at the trebuchet, that's fine, that's whatever. But what I really want to make sure doesn't happen is this guy attacking the trebuchet. And if we can get control of this barracks, the mission's over. So yeah, I really do want to roll the trebuchet forward into a position where I can potentially attack the barracks, which would mean right here. And if we put a uh, swordsman in this spot, like how far forward could the wagon roll? We could roll the wagon all the way to here. And <laughs> drop the swordsman off there. I actually kind of like that. This gives us a really, really strong defense against this alchemist getting in. Ah, get out of here! What will mom think? So we roll you all the way forward. Archer can't crit the trebuchet. Reinforce you. Man, I have to stand in the open if I want this shot to. Okay, that's safe. Turns out giants are pretty good at protecting people. Then the alchemist just moves forward. We could cast our heal. I don't know. I don't think it's a big... Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal right now. The only thing I can think of is, like, healing the, um, healing the flyer here would be pretty useful. I don't think it's worth the 300 gold. You two very slowly move back toward the front. Yeah, I think these two are going to have a hard time making an impression with uh, the troops arrayed the way they are. So I don't need to save 700 gold. We could definitely do something here. Honestly, I'm just going to buy another Harpy. Then we'll probably save next turn. If we're able to get a hold of the barracks next turn, then we can uh, purchase another trebuchet out of the southern part of it the turn after. And that's actually in range, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. 
A trebuchet purchased here can immediately attack their stronghold. That is probably how this is going to end, because their commander is really just in full retreat here. Okay, no big surprise there. Wagon does exactly what we needed it to do. Alright, all of our troops remain undamaged. What on earth was that noise? Huh. I have no idea, actually. Weird. Well, he ran himself into a little bit of a position on this one. Okay, so no more enemies in the backfield. Let's think here. How do we want to do this? I don't really want to move you forward yet, so we could afford to finish him off like this. Have the spearmen do a recapture. Have the archer focus on actually getting into range. It would be best if I... Ah, man. That's frustrating. Well, I could throw down the cherry stone nearby. Oh, but my alchemist isn't going to be able to stand... Okay, it, my alchemist could stand here, though. That would be fine. Yeah, let's do this. We'll throw an elder shield in cherry this time. Stones defend us! So the trebuchet is completely safe again. get a really bad crit. Yeah, this is way more damage. There we go. That's the crit we're looking for. Unfortunately, this leaves me vulnerable to their spearmen, but hey. Plan can't be perfect. So we're not going to be able to recapture this this turn. We wouldn't be able to use gold to buy things out of it until the turn after next, at the very earliest. So we can't afford to buy another fast move in something here. I think I'm just gonna deluge them with harpies. Anything else that we hire is gonna approach so slowly. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so this happens, but we do at least have some defenses. Okay. They hurl all of their existing units at the Alchemist, which is absolutely fine by me. Uh, I guess let's crush... Let's see. You are able to pretty easily deal with that Alchemist. You could run in here and smash him. I'm just going to uncapture this. They are going to want to recapture it. Uh, but they don't actually have a lot of units over here that can do that. They either have to do it with their hero or with this guy. Uh, the alchemist being dead does not really make the flyer any safer. We have a lot of things over here that can hit it. And I think rather than trying to recapture these economic buildings up here, we should just push forward. Because if we bring the uh, the other golem in through the north gate, they're going to have a really hard time dealing with that push. So, if we don't get to capture it till next turn, we can again purchase, but I don't, like... I don't know that we're going to get anything valuable out of purchasing this turn. We're so far away from the place that all of our troops come from. Even with a wagon, this would be slow going. Okay, so that thing's dead. Right, they get that recapture. Interesting, the Spearman doesn't do anything at all, he just retreats. Not what I was expecting. So you... Ah, uh, we're one space short of contributing over here. Yeah, I guess I don't love that I have to uh, take an actual hit from this thing in order to um, in order to attack it with our with our archer crit.
I think I'm I'm gonna kill. Well, not kill. I'm gonna get this guy very very low. I'm gonna trebuchet the barracks again, and then I'm just gonna have the hero capture it instead of attacking. Now they can try to work through that. Knight over here. Golem over here. So we probably are going to have to back up, even though that sacrifices our crit. Uh, I guess just reinforce? Not going to do a meaningful amount of damage anyway, right? Uh, so this gets you low enough that you're not really a threat to anybody anymore. Could uncapture the building, but if it does, we just recapture it with the Spearman. And I'm going to save a bunch of money in the hopes that we're going to be able to purchase a cool thing next turn. That Ballista is going to be able to shoot our hero, but not very hard. And that it's going to get smashed, so. I gotta say, the, uh, the AI really loves to buy Ballistas, but they do not seem good at all. And they're, they're good at the one thing. They're good at fighting, they're good at protecting your units from flyers. But that is absolutely it. So they're fixated enough on our commander that they're failing to take back their barracks, which I think is a pretty bad play. That's awesome. That worked out really well for us. Yeah, they're just throwing their units away on our larger units. And in fact, we don't even recapture this with... Well, we don't have to anyway, because the archer is only going to be able to move up next to it anyway. So we had a we had a bunch of different ways of recapturing that. Uh, you won't quite deal lethal, but this is pretty good. Let's knock out the archer. So. I'm trying to think, like, what I want to do is buy a trebuchet right there, right? I'm trying to figure out how we make that safe. I guess, actually, if I move... Yeah, this knight's a problem. If we move the hero to here, and the giant to here, that works out pretty well. Or we could reverse those. Yeah, actually, we could use the Elder Stone to uh, block the way as well. Cherry stones defend us. Actually, this is really good. Have you come down here and I guess attack this because there's almost no consequence for doing so? Purchase a trebuchet in attack position, and that's about the end of that, right? Oh, right, we can't fly over the wall. We can fly around it, however. Okay, I do believe this is just about over. Yep, yeah, that's uh that's the best he's got. Yeah, they're just they're not able to actually get in on the traps, so nice big crit from you. And I think that does it, right? Yeah, I, I understand why the AI runs its commander away. If the AI is not going to be able to do a good job of, like, judging the positions and the danger level of threats, then overexposing the commander could allow the mission to end really quickly. But the fact that his commander refused to fight at all definitely cost them that mission. A well-fought battle on both sides. Emmerich, don't just lie to the kid. <laughs> that was tough. Hmm? You did very well for one so young. Thanks. Wait, no, I, I mean, even though you won, I still won't surrender. You're my enemy. Well, it looks like we may have to kill this child in order to get through. Your enemy, is he? Empress. What? Mom, you know them? Old friends. And older allies. Uh... Allies? Oh, gosh. 
Don't worry, there will be no long-term consequences for us, the ruling class. Please forgive me. <sighs> I was wrong. Of course a queen so fair could not commit acts so foul. Could you not hit on me right now, right at this I'm moment? I'm real sorry. You, you, again, you did just kill hundreds of my men. Emmerich, Queen Mercia. I made my way here when news reached us that you might be crossing the border. I am sorry I did not get here sooner. My son, he is a talented commander. But sometimes he puts heart before head. In any case... <laughs> I know of your situation, and you have my allegiance. I assume your intention is to destroy the Fell Gauntlet in order to defeat Lord Vald. Yeah. We can supply you with soldiers, sailors, and ships enough to make passage to Felon. Our ships will meet you at our southernmost port, mm -hmm. in the Circle Sea. So our fleet will be crewed by Merfolk, the most able of sailors. Are they? Because why would they why would they be that? They don't need boats, right? Thank you. Okay, well, I mean, listen, maybe merfolk here doesn't mean what I think it means, which is fish people who would have absolutely no use for a boat and thus would not culturally have a lot of uh, practice with them. Faced with the combined strength of our two nations, Valder will surely fall. And also Nuru's here. But, as you must realize, while the continent is in such turmoil, I am unable to abandon Heavensong, so instead my son will be accompanying you on your campaign. He will learn much from you, I am sure, and in turn you will benefit greatly from his skills. Farewell. That seems unlikely. The might of Heavensong stands with you, and Koji, you represent your country and its throne. Don't fail me. This is my chance. Lo loving words from a mother. <laughs> Ooh, we, we get to keep him. Thank you. Okay, well, good that we were able to resolve that after only three battles. And you know what? Two stars is not a bad score. Your Highness. Tenry, I need to talk to you. What do you know of Requiem? Requiem? Rumors, legends... An evil power, an instrument of destruction. It's a myth. <laughs> no, not a myth. Not according to Merciful. He, his spirit, told us about it. I believe Felheim seeks it. If that's true, you must stop them. Destroy the gauntlet, dispel Valder's power. I know of no other way. Yeah, I mean, we're sort of... This is the page we're already on, right? <laughs> he has to think real hard about her telling him to do the thing that he already was definitely going to do. Alright, we got a couple more side missions here. We'll knock these out before we move any further in the plot. But that is a real tomorrow sort of problem. For now, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, come back next time, like I said, for some more uh, some more side missions. Maybe another puzzle level or two. And we'll see you then.